In today's video, we're going to be looking at spectral rendering. What is spectral rendering? Where can we find the setting and how can it improve our images and our renders in Dash Studio? And we're going to look at that right now. So welcome to today's tutorial. And today we're going to be looking at something a bit more technical. So it's not going to be any kind of skills related kind of thing. We're going to go into a bit more detail about the IRA uh, render engine and exactly how it kind of works and how it interprets light. So let's get started with that right now. So as you can see, I've got my preview here, IRA preview of a very familiar thumbnail that you've seen before. I haven't done anything to it. It's the same thumbnail that I used in the actual uh, Deforce Hair tutorial. I haven't added any lights or anything, so everything is here on the right-hand side where it was before. And what I want to just discuss now is we're going to talk about spectral rendering. So we've got spectral rendering. What is spectral rendering? How can it help us? Um, and, you know, is it worth using? Okay. So obviously to get to spectral rendering, we go to render tab here, the render settings tab, we click on some rend uh, spectral rendering here, and then you get the option. Now, obviously by default, it's turned off because we're using the IRA engine, the IRA render engine. So basically the IRA uh, render engine is an unbased, unbiased, sorry, render engine. And what that means is, um, when I go to this here, I'll go to here and this will show you a bit more. So what it means unbiased, the way uh, iRay translates uh, colors and light is it uses RGB values. So not these specific RGB values, but it uses the red, green, blue that we all know, uh, come accustomed to. So it uses those to interpret light and then obviously create the render. So this is what it's doing right now. It's, it's using the RGB values of the specific light settings, including the HDRI and everything. And it's getting all that information and then it's uh, putting it all together and it's giving you your render, basically. That's what it's doing. And what spectral rendering does is spectral rendering uses the wavelength. So if I go to this here, uh, where are we? Here we go. So every color in, that we see uh, now has a wavelength. And what spectral rendering does is it uses the actual frequency, the actual wavelength uh, of these colors, of the color range. Now a Octane, the Octane render engine uses this. So the Octane render engine doesn't use RGB values. It uses a wavelength. So it uses actual frequencies of the colors to interpret light and then give you that render, uh, give you that render in the, uh, give you that render image. Okay, so now that we know that iRay is an unbi unbiased render engine, uh, what happens when we turn on spectral rendering? So let's go back to Dash Studio. So this is just the iRay, obviously. I'm gonna turn on spectral rendering now, and that gives us a few extra options. So with these extra options, you've got spectral conversion intent, you've got faithful and natural, and then you've got spectral observer, CIE 1931 and CIE 1964. Now you can do a bit more research on this if you want to go into a lot of mathematical details, exactly what it is and how it works. I'm not going to bore you with that. All I'm going to tell you is that this is two ways of doing the conversion, basically. So once I start changing, you'll see the render uh, will preview will change. Now you won't see much difference because you really need to render it out. I do have some examples which we'll go through here later on. So let's just go through these now. So I've got natural here. If I change to natural, you'll see it start changing. That one straight away has a big difference. You can see straight away. Uh, what it's doing. So basically it's the way that these two options and these options interpret light. Ideally what you should need to do is you need to go to your um, your scenes and actually render them out using these and actually see which one you prefer. Um, we're going to go through some examples uh, later on but ideally you really need to do that in your own scenes and depending on the lighting you use and everything you'll get different um, you get different outputs basically. So straight away, uh, what I've noticed using spectral rendering is the big con is, is that your, uh, your render times do increase. So they do increase, uh, quite significantly. So especially if you don't have uh, a lot of graphics card power or you're running or you do CPU rendering, it's going to take a very, very long time to do the rendering. So that's something to consider, uh, with spectral rendering. Now, one of the bonus things about spectral rendering is you're going to get very accurate lighting. Um, you know, very accurate and um, it's very good for skin tones. So if you want really nice, accurate skin tone color, it's really good for that. And I'm going to go through some of the actual um, examples I've got now, and then we can go through and you can have a look. So let's go through the first example. Uh, I think it's going to be 1A here. There it is. So here is the example I've done, uh, one here. So you can see here left to right, the different settings. And you can see straight away how spectral normal reacts depending, it doesn't even matter about the CIE version, 1931 or 1964. This is how it kind of achieves, uh, it thinks to interpret light. 
So straight away, I would say that normal is probably no good for, I don't know why it's there, but it's definitely no good. So I would remove that as an option straight away. Okay, and you can see the IRA version here. This is just IRA. These obviously images are no post work. So these are straight from the render engine. I haven't done any post work on these just to, to show you exactly what you're going to get when you do a render using these settings. So there you can see straight away. Obviously, it's the screen's a bit small. You can't see everything. Uh, what I'm going to do is with these uh, examples, I'm going to give you a link in the description box down below. You can check that out. Click on the link, download the images, and you can see for yourself which what you prefer and do a detailed analysis if you want to. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of these two now. I'm going to go to my other example so we can have these three together a bigger screen. So let me go do that now. So there we go. So we got rid of the normal ones because it's not very good. Um, I don't know why normal does that, but it seems to interpret light in a strange way where it kind of removes light and it just gives you like a very, um, a very washed out effect of your renders. So here we got IRA on the left, which we're used to. We got Spectral Faithful and uh, 1931 and CIE 1964. Now, in all honesty, when I've looked at these, I can't really tell the difference. And the difference is very, very subtle. It's ridiculous. The differences are very, very subtle. Uh, to be honest, I can't tell the difference. Uh, the only thing I can tell probably is from the side here. So when you look at this kind of section here and then compare it to here and then compare it over here, there seems to be a bit more blue light on the 1964 version here. That's the only thing I can see. Um, maybe I'm not very good with colors. I don't know. So it's something for you to check the difference. So the only difference I can see is I'm getting more blue light in this area than here and then here. I can't really see any difference anywhere else. And the reason why I use these colors here is just to have a blue light here and like a pink light coming on this side or purplish light. It's just to see what spectral rendering does with the actual colors because we're looking at the, the the colors. It's all about colors, isn't it? The interpretation of colors. So I can't really tell much there. So this is a pretty, this is a darker render. So I did another render where this is a bit lighter. So I'm going to show you that now. So let's just close this as well. Uh, I think it's too, too, here it is. So here's the, uh, here's a render I did of the image of my thumbnail. And you can tell in a bright setting so we can see the difference. So here you can see quite clearly natural does the same thing. It kind of removes the light, the excess kind of light for some reason and tries to give you that balance of how it would be uh, if there was no light here. And then you've got the faithful spectral. So I've removed these again, the natural, uh, uh, the spectral natural ones. And I've got these three here. So I'm going to do that now. There we go. So here we've got iRay, we've got the spec, uh, Spectral Faithful, uh, 1931 and 64 again, it's Faithful. And in all honesty, I cannot tell the difference uh, with iRay and Spectral um, whatsoever. So I don't know if some of you are better with colors and can see better with your eyes or make associations with this, but I can't see the difference whatsoever in this. The colors look more or less the same to me. The changes are very, very subtle. Maybe some changes around the face here that I can see. I'm not too sure, but it's very, very difficult to see the changes. Um, and to be honest, most of you that do your renders probably go into uh, your postbook applications such as Photoshop or whatever it is, GIMP or whatever you're using, and you probably enhance the skin anyway. So doing spectral rendering probably isn't advantageous for you that are for you people that actually use postwork techniques. For those of us, for those of you that don't use any postwork techniques and do a straight renders, this may be advantageous to you. So to give you that kind of proper coloring of the, the skin, the texture with the light that we have. Now, I think the reason why these all look very familiar is because I'm not using um, different color light. It's just one light. And if I was using different color light, as in the previous example, for example, here where we're using kind of blues and reds and pinks and things, I think you would get a different effect uh, with that. So it's kind of inconclusive in, in conclusion, uh, whether spectral rendering is actually any good. Um, it really depends on what your renders are and how you're using lights in your scenes. But what I would say to you is go out, test it, test the, test the actual spectral rendering. It may improve your renders, it may not. You will see an increase of your render time uh, because of the actual, the way the calculations are done and everything. But it's worth testing out. It's worth, it could be something that could be a game changer for you. You never know because of the renders you're creating. So I always try things, always try things like this. Test it out, renders, do the render. It may not work. What I, what I will be doing, what I suggest is actually that if, you, if you're doing portraits, if portraits is your thing 
and you want to be great at portraits or if you have a lot of uh, renders where you're showing a lot of skin maybe I would definitely recommend doing um, uh, some sort of spectral rendering for that because I think you will see a lot of improvement especially if you're not using any kind of uh, Photoshop or any kind of um, image editing software to enhance your skin of your characters then definitely try this it may be something worth looking at.